possible, but he still didn't allow me. I thought he needed in six months in his laboratory, 250,000, quarter of a million of these light bulbs at totally different construction, absolutely different construction, so Edison could not really say a word. And of course, they, they had uh, generators over there, supply, which supplied electricity to everything, to the machinery, to the, to the lights. So of course, they invited the president of the United States, Grover Cleveland, to press the button. Everybody was so excited. They didn't know what to expect. It was evening. He pressed the button. Guess what happened? He turned the night into a day. It was a sight that has never been seen before in the entire world. And that was the final victory of the, of the meeting. But I have to say something in uh, Edison's defense. Shortly after that, Tesla was eating his dinner at a restaurant, and Edison stepped inside with some pals, some buddies, and he came to Tesla's desk. Of course, Tesla was a younger. Tesla stood up. He was a very, he had a very, very good upbringing. And um, uh, Edison said, Tesla, congratulations on your victory. And then Tesla said, I don't feel like a victor. And then Edison said, yes, progress one. Two big men, two great men. How do they, how do they talk to each other? The other thing what, <clears throat> what Edison did, um, two years after the Chicago Fair, fire broke out in Tesla's life. And that was devastating. It was only raging for an hour, hour and a half, but everything was destroyed. The, the, the floor collapsed, and years and years of Tesla's hard work and documentation and the prototypes and other models, everything went into the smoke. And Tesla, Tesla just was, just, okay, he was speechless. Guess what happened? Edison let him work in his lab for a year before he collected enough money to build another laboratory. So, see? Okay. Um, uh, as I said, Tesla, oh, there is another thing that I wanted to mention from Tesla's childhood. He was approximately 11 years old and somebody sent a postcard from America with a picture of Niagara Falls. And then Tesla remembered his water wheels and in his imagination, he was a phenomenal imagination. He could see things in 3D, turning around, and all his patterns actually were first conceived in his mind, okay, with, with the teeniest, teeniest details, and once when they were constructed, they worked exactly like Tesla predicted. So that's another thing. Okay. So we actually jumped from all languages into something else, because it's obvious that Tesla spoke French, and Tesla spoke English, and also he spoke Italian, because the area where he lived was close to Italy. So eight languages, Serbian, Latin, Italian, German, Czech, um, Hungarian, French, and English. And yes, but he had a perfect memory. He could memorize everything that he read only once. He could repeat the entire book verbatim after just reading it reading it once. He was just an unbelievable, unbelievable mind. Okay? So, when he saw the Niagara Falls, he remembered his water wheels, and then he imagined in his phenomenal imagination a huge reel being turned by the power of the water, of the falling water, okay? and producing electricity. At this point, I would like to ask Zoran Milanovic to tell us more about about energy, sources of energy, and possible conversions, and then we will continue after he